So the Fisher equation connects nominal rates, real rates, and expected inflation. We have seen that for the LM curve, it's the nominal interest rate that matters. That's the important one. That's the one that tells to you how good a store of value are bonds relative to money. What about the IS curve? If we're going to use the ISLM model to talk about these issues, we need to know in a case where, because inflation expectations are not zero, there's a difference between these two interest rates. We need to know which one is important for what, otherwise we won't be able to get the analysis correct. So the LM curve is about the money market, and there it's the nominal interest rate that matters. The IS curve is about the puts market, which interest rate matters there? The real. By that I mean that consumption, investment, those components of demand, those are likely, if they depend on interest rates, to depend on real interest rates, not uh, nominal rates. Of course, there is a connection between nominal and real rates using the Fisher equation. But when the inflation expectations change, that connection moves, that the, the relationship between nominal and real interest rates becomes different. Do you understand why it's the real interest rate that matters for uh, consumption and investment? <coughs> many, many students struggle with this, so I, 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 um, I have an example which I always use to, to try to uh, demonstrate this. Um, okay, so let's, let's think about it. So suppose you're, um, let's think about investment. Investment, very important component of demand. So investment is done by firms, uh, firms that either want to expand or new businesses start up. So if you're a, an entrepreneur or you're running a business and you went to the bank to ask for a bank loan to get you, to get you started or to get you to, get you to expand, um, of course, the bank is going to be offering you a loan with a nominal interest rate. That's simply how it will be. No bank is going to talk in terms of real interest rates. So why is it that when we, we do economics courses, there's a claim that it's actually the real interest rate that, um, that matters? So let's think about it. So suppose we take an example. Suppose the business in question is a craftsman who's going to make jewelry. So you need some capital, in the case of the craftsman, he needs some tools to work with in order to make uh, jewelry, which he'll then sell uh, in the future. So the example will be that you need some you need, uh, tools. This is going to be the capital that you invest in to make um, some jewelry. That, that'll be the output. So that's, that's an investment decision. Investing means buying some tools to produce output jewelry in the future. Okay, so let, let me briefly describe the production uh, process. So let, let, I'm going to make this a numerical example because that will hopefully make it less abstract. You can see why um, real interest rates are going to matter. So you need four tools uh, to make um, one item of jewelry per year. 
not a very productive crafts, but these numbers are just for uh, uh, simplicity. sense so far? So suppose you are this craftsman. You have to decide whether to enter this business or not, start up this business. Um, assume you have, no, you have no cash of your own to start it, you have to borrow from the bank. Suppose the interest rate, the nominal interest rate, is 10%. So loans cost you uh, a rate of 10%. So I need to give you one more piece of information, which is when you've bought your tools, when you set up your workshop, Produced your first item of jewellery, which will take you a year, according to this uh, example. How much do you think the jewellery is going to sell for? Which, of course, need not be the same as the hundred dollars that it was selling at when you first um, took the bank loan, bought the tools, before you actually made any jewellery. So we're going to say your expected price level. Keep it simple to begin with. I'm going to change this later. Let's suppose you don't expect jewelry to change in price over the next year. So $100.
So work out what you'll have to repay in the future if you borrow from the bank to start this business. Work out what your revenue will be in a year's time and what your tools will be worth. So in other words, in, in one year's time, will it have made sense to start this business? Will the revenue of the business plus its asset value be greater than its liabilities, its loans to the bank? There are, there are no wage costs here. Assume the craftsman just employs himself. There's no, no other there are no other workers. There are, there are no raw material costs. Just, just the cost of buying the, the capital or tools, just to keep it simple. So work out two numbers what you would have to repay, and what your revenue is, plus your uh, asset value of business. Have a go at doing that now. Okay, so how much would you borrow? How much do you need to borrow to start? Four hundred dollars. Four tools. They cost a hundred dollars each. So you need to borrow four hundred to start this operation. How much do you have to repay? Four hundred and forty. Ten percent added on to four hundred. So you're repaying this hundred and four hundred and forty next year. What's your revenue? You make an item of jewelry and you expect to sell it for 100. What's your asset value? That's what your tools are worth in a year's time. You bought four of them. There's been some depreciation. So there are four tools. Only 0.8 of the value is left, because 20% depreciation. And then there is the, the value of the tools, and that's of course the same as the price that I'll give my simplifying assumption. So uh, that's times $100. So that's 80% um, of, of uh, $400, which is $300. So revenue plus assets is what? That's what you gain. That's four hundred and so would you take a loan? No, you wouldn't you wouldn't take a loan at ten percent, but under these circumstances. What's the lowest interest rate? Sorry, what, what's the highest interest rate at which you take the loan? Five percent.
So if everything else was the same, but you changed the interest rate to 5%, If the interest rate was 5%, you'd repay how much? You'd repay exactly 420. So at that point, you'd be indifferent. so far? Okay, so now, now the point about the real interest rates, which I was building up. So suppose the nominal interest rate Expect price level 